In this video, I'm going to talk about several important related concepts, and that's paper space, layout tabs, viewports, and title blocks. All these things are tied together into one fundamental concept that's very important to understanding AutoCAD and how it works. Now, if you go back to when you first started learning AutoCAD, you've probably heard about model space being drawn uh, or being used as your infinite drawing canvas for whatever you need to draw, which is drawn at true size, full scale, or one-to-one. -one. Now, that concept carries through when it comes to working with title blocks. So for a title block, if you haven't used technical drawings before, is basically a border around the outside of a drawing that identifies who drew the drawing, what company, what's the project name, project number, the date, revision history, etc. And that should also still be drawn at true size, full scale. So how is this possible? Because we're trying to fit a building that's drawn at true size into a border that is the size of a piece of paper that is drawn at true size. So that was kind of the quandary that uh, Autodesk had and why they created paper space or layout tabs as a concept to solve this problem. So up till now you've been working on the model tab on the lower left or model space. Now you'll notice that there are other tabs and there may be one or maybe two. It might be called work, it might be called layout one. Um, so the names will vary depending a little bit on which template was used to create the drawing. If you click on the other tab there, um, and by the way, I've mentioned this a couple times before, if you don't have those tabs, it may be hidden like this, then you have black and white square icons on the lower right, and those represent the tabs, and you can right click and hit display in order to show the tabs on the lower left. So if you click on one of those tabs, such as work, you will see kind of a white outline that basically is intended to represent your paper. And you may or may not have the grid showing up or parts of your drawing showing up and a couple little window type things shown there. You may only have just a white outline. You may not even have that. It depends a lot on how the file is set up that you're working with. But let's back up a little bit and talk about what is the concept of this tab that we're on now. So the model tab is called model space. That's where you draw the model the building. The tab that we're on now is considered paper space. It represents the paper. This is what you would visualize as the final sheet or printed drawing is what you'd see in front of you now. Now I did go over before how you can print from model space and that's still true. When you want a quick print it's always possible. But what you do in paper space is intended to be your more formal organized final drawing in the title block at a certain scale in a kind of a finalized setup. So a couple little clarifications about what this is for or how to work with it. First at the very bottom right you'll see a button there that says model or paper. That's going to be a very important button. We'll come back and talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Now if you we'll come back and talk about that more in a few minutes. Now if you have any um, windows showing up that are already here, you'll notice that you can click on this model paper button and it switches you back and forth um, between working in the window, which is technically called a viewport, and working out of the viewport. Now, if you're in paper mode with that button, then you can select the viewport as an object and delete it so that we're starting with a clean slate. So now all I have is the outline of my paper. So you have to visualize this as your finished paper uh, with the title block and all that stuff on it. So the concept of how this works is you basically cut a hole in this window and that's I just deleted two of those and they will display whatever you previously drew in model space or whatever you draw in the future in model space it'll continue to always be active and show whatever's in model space. So the holes that I'm talking about or the windows are called viewports. 
you can get to the viewport setup or to create viewports, um, go to the view um, tab on your ribbon. And then you'll notice there's a viewport section or panel including uh, create polygon shape ones or just new. So I'm going to start with just simple new for right now. And when you click on new, it pops up with the, the viewports dialog box. And then you can choose whether you want just a single one or you can do two or three or more and pick a configuration. If you have a certain goal in mind of I need four viewports to perfectly divide up my paper, then you could do four. But 90% of the time what I do is single because I usually do one at a time and kind of set it up the way I want. But you could play with the other options if you want. So I'm going to hit single and then OK. And now you're clicking two corners just like drawing a rectangle. Click and click. So you may remember uh, when I started I had this rectangle over here in uh, model space and I drew that very quickly as like a representation of a plant. So, you know, if I uh, offset this to have some thickness for walls, maybe that'll be easier for you to visualize. So that's my very simple plan. Now I can come back to the work tab. You can go back and forth between those two tabs as many times as you need. So now when I drew the viewport, it cuts the hole in my paper to show what I have on my model space. So you can see there's my little plan. And you can see how the thickness is there, because I went back and updated it. So the viewport is always, always going to be current um, as to update with whatever you change in model space. The viewport is an actual object, so you can always select that. And that's how I started, was deleting them, just to kind of start fresh so that everybody would be on the same page. So if you needed to, you can pull the grips in order to change the size, change the shape, um, in order to you know control where it goes on your paper. So normally, on a, any type of professional drawing, you'd have a title block. So I'm going to bring a title block in. If you're not dealing with title blocks at this point, you can skip this. It's not a huge deal. Anytime you want to insert another CAD file into the CAD file you're working in, you can either copy-paste or you can hit I for insert and then browse to find the CAD file you want. So I'm going to uh, path to where I have a title block saved, and then I will pull that into my drawing. When you insert something like a title block, you always want it to be inserted at the corner of the sheet or at 0, 0, 0, which is you know the center of your drawing area. So coordinates still apply even though we're in paper space. Basically, all the same rules apply. It's just intended to be represented in your paper rather than your model. So I'm going to leave this at 0, 0. I'm going to leave the scale at 1 to 1 because I want it to be full size, etc. So I can hit OK and then that inserts my title block. Now you can see that the title block is not fitting on my paper. This is very common because a lot of times you'll not have set up the print settings until after you bring the title block in so that the two correspond to one another. So that's very common. So now I'm going to go back to the print setup and now I know more about how to do this because I picked a specific title block that was 30 by 42 and now I can make a decision about the printer, etc. If you don't have a title block to work with, a lot of times what I suggest is just draw a rectangle that represents the size of the paper you want to use. And you may want to put that on the def points layer because that's the layer that never prints. Def points. So I'm going to pick the uh, uh, PDF pr uh, printer because I know it will do 30 by 42. And then I'm going to find my architectural E 30 by 42. You can leave this on layout. Um, what I usually prefer is to choose extents for what to plot because that allows me to check the center box. Now, an important distinction between printing in model space and paper space is the scale. In model space, in order to make the drawing or the building fit on a piece of paper, we have to choose a small scale here, like a quarter or an eighth or something like that. But in paper space, the viewport is what's controlling the scale. And the whole idea of paper space was to allow your title block or your border to be one to one. So when you're printing from paper space, this has to stay at a one to one scale. That's very important. All the scale of the building itself is going to be controlled by the viewport. So you leave this at one to one when you're printing from paper space. And then you can change your drawing orientation if you needed to. 
And again, I'm going to do a separate video on line weight control where I talk about the plot style tables. Now I want to save these settings, so I'm going to hit apply to layout. And if you hit OK, you're going to go ahead and actually print it. I don't really want to do that. All I was trying to do was set up everything. So I'm going to press cancel. As long as you hit apply to layout, it will remember your settings. Now you can see how the paper is going around my title block like you would expect it to, rather than it kind of, uh, you know, being too small. Now, one other way to get to those settings is page setup. You can hit that either from the print command in the pull down menu, page setup, or you can right click on your tab and get to page setup manager that way. You can get to the same settings. So once you're serious about making your tab for a specific purpose, like a floor plan or something, you can also rename these tabs. Um, instead of work, you can double click a lot like you would in Excel, and then I can call this floor plan, etc. It's very common for a larger project to have 10 or 15 tabs for various different drawing sheets that you might have created to show different parts of a project. So now the viewport, you can see it's kind of sticking out of the border and it's too small compared to what it could be. So I can pull these grips to get it inside my border where it needs to be. I don't usually place it directly on the edge of the border. Uh, some people do that, but I think it's a bad idea because one, it's harder to find the viewport later when it's directly on top of the border. It's harder to pick it because you have them on top of one another. And you also, um, are going to have the possibility of your drawing running right up to the border and being cropped off there. Because if I pull this viewport smaller, you can see how it's cropping off the drawing. You don't want your drawing entities to run right into your border because that looks bad. So I usually leave this kind of floating a little bit more in my drawing area. Now I don't want this line, the viewport itself, to actually print and by nature it will because it's an object. It's just like a rectangle that's acting as a window into model space. So I'm going to put that on the def points layer. And this is a little subjective. A lot of companies have a specific layer for viewports. And that's actually the best way. Um, so you can either put it on a viewport layer or you can put it on the def points layer. And again, that layer is built into CAD and by definition, it will never print. So by putting the viewport on the layer, I'll get that line to not print that is the actual viewport itself. Okay, so now a couple more steps and then I'll be done setting this up. A couple more little things, scale. The viewport I said is gonna control the scale. If you double click in the viewport, by the way, that's the same as pressing the model paper toggle at the bottom right. You're working through the viewport. This is when you can manipulate your objects that are in model space. So don't go deleting things or whatnot because you'll be deleting them from the actual project. But this is how you set the scale. You can double click and I can pan and zoom just like you would in model space to get your plan kind of centered. N notice that when you zoom, you are changing the scale, but right now it doesn't matter because I haven't set it yet. Now I can come down to the, the scale pull down at the lower right. And let's say I want this to be quarter scale. I might even be able to go larger than that. Let's do, yeah, let's do half inch scale. But this is an easy way to check and see, okay, what scales can I use to where my drawing will fit on the title block or border or the paper that I have? So you set the scale that way, double click and pick it from the pull down. Now be careful not to zoom because if you zoom, you've screwed up the scale. See, there it goes. Now it's not a half inch anymore. And you can tell because it doesn't say half inch down here on the lower right. So usually what I suggest is that once you get it right, you can click the little lock and that will lock the scale so that uh, you won't screw it up anymore. And then you can leave the viewport again by double clicking outside or by using that model paper toggle. That's the basics of how to control paper space. You can make additional viewports the same way. You can set the different viewports to show different views when you get to the three-dimensional drawing. Um, but that's kind of the basic concept of how it works.